So when we speak of these analytical errors, the next thing we need to look at is uncertainty. Because sometimes these the analytical errors and uncertainty are used uh, you know, interchangeably. So what is the difference between the two? Th- mainly the difference between an error and an uncertainty is that an error means it's the difference between a measured value and a true value. So the variation between what it's supposed to be and what it is, that is seen as an error. While an uncertainty is used to describe possible values within which the true value can lie. You know, so it's a range of values. So with an uncertainty, you'll see that when we talk about uncertainty, it will always be plus minus. So you'll have a number plus minus another number. So you're saying my true value lies within this range. And that plus minus number is seen as an uncertainty. And an error is now, this is what it's supposed to be, but I'm reading that. So the difference between the two becomes the error. It is, it sounds the same, but it's not exactly the same. So when you calculate measurement uncertainty, essentially what you're doing is you are combining all errors, all known errors, you know, both random and systematic errors are combined into, into one unit. Because when you then look at your uncertainty value, it will be a range. And how you actually calculate it is the sum, you know, of all these different uh, contributing factors. Okay, so how do we calculate measurement uncertainty? I'm going to try to explain very, very briefly um, how to calculate or estimate uh, measurement uncertainty from your analytical measurement. This is taken as a, from a guide, from the Euro guide um, CG4, which talks about quantifying uncertainty in an analytical measurement. So I've just taken extracts of, of their process of how you could actually estimate. There's different ways to calculate measurement uncertainty. Every lab has its own uh, format. There's different softwares you can use. There's a whole lot of way. But what you need to understand, regardless of the software that you use, the concept is essentially the same. And this is what I'm going to try and explain. Because what you input into that calculation is important. So if you understand what you're doing or why you're doing what you're doing it makes sense regardless of what software you use or what approach you use but if you understand what are you trying to get out of this then this is what i'm going to try and explain very 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 briefly and very basically so step one you start by first specifying your measurement this means that what am i actually trying to quantify or to cal- to calculate what which uncertainty for what value am i looking at you might be calculating a final concentration of a specific solution you know so you then say okay this is what i'm trying to do i'm trying to quantify uncertainty for this particular solution that's step one step two says identify uncertainty sources so what you essentially do here is you break down your process how do I get to this final solution? What steps do I go? So you'll write up your experimental steps to say step one was this, 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 this. You write all of them down and you look at them and say, where are my possible sources of uncertainty? If you weighed something, maybe you weighed a pure metal to prepare that solution. By weighing, what uncertainty is associated with that? You've got the actual mass of that pure metal that you weighed. You've got a purity there. You are weighing So you've got your balance uncertainty in there. And then if you dissolve this into a volume, a certain volume that maybe you transfer and dissolve it into a volume. So your volume measurement, you know, what uncertainty are linked in that. And also remember there's somebody actually doing that. So you need to also look at at people's bias. This is where we then look at values of your repeatability or repeatability and add those also, you know, to to your measurement and setting. If you then at the end use an instrument, you know, to actually read the solution, you will then need to, what sources of uncertainty do you get from that particular instrument? So you essentially write every single step of the process and in each step you identify where are my possible sources and then you can, you're gonna then quantify them. Step three is when you're now actually doing your calculation. 
what you do is you're going to simplify you've identified all your different sources you now need to find data for it you know some of the data will be existing data so as i mentioned that you probably weighed a pure metal and you have a purity and there will be an uncertainty linked to it if you're using a volumetric flask or a pipette when you that volume you know on it you will have an uncertainty so there's other things that where there's existing data you're going to use that on things that don't have existing data you would then have to decide how do i quantify my uncertainty for this thing do you do repeat analysis to get a value out of it or how exactly do you do that so for every single thing you essentially the first step is you identify which are the main contributing factor which ones matter you know so you probably have identified 10 but you then realize that out of this 10 two of them are not really significant and then you decide you're going to remove them from your calculation the rest of them you find a way to quantify them some will quantify from existing data others you'll just have to collect the data yourself so once you've got all the data you know all the different you need to now convert every single one of these into standard uncertainty this is essentially done by you what you're literally trying to get is you're trying to remove units from everything. You know, you're almost going to end up with a dimensionless um, numbers. So that you can remember you have different sources from different components. Some are volume, which is in, in a volume measurement. Others are mass measurement. So when you're doing this calculation, the end result will be a dimensionless number. And that's what you're trying to get at. So your last step becomes, you now calculate your combined uncertainty, you review your data, reviewing it to see what are the largest contribution factors and are they calculated correctly or is there something I can do to reduce this number? Because you ideally don't want a very high number as an uncertainty value because essentially it's, this is what it means that your number is anywhere within this range. So the bigger the number, the, you're saying that you have such high doubt of your number so you review so what you'll ideally do is you take you look at the total relative to each and every one of those components and you see which one has a higher percentage and just review how that was done or if there's anything you can do to reduce it and after that you then decide once you're happy with the number you then calculate your expanded uncertainty essentially what this means is you use a coverage factor. The coverage factor that you particularly use for your lab will depend on the confidence limit. There's a table that has coverage factors relative to confidence limit and you would calculate that and have your expanded uncertainty. And that's essentially your method. You've calculated your combined uncertainty, you've calculated your expanded uncertainty, you can also have a relative uncertainty. This is your uncertainty relative to whatever number that you are looking at and that you calculate as a percentage. So you will now have all those components and how you actually report it will depend on you as a lab or what your client wants to see in, a, in every format, whether they just want to see a standard uncertainty or they want a relative uncertainty or they want um, an expanded uncertainty. You provide all those values and decide on what's the best fit. Calculating or estimating measurement uncertainty can get complicated. But if you have a basic understanding of your method and you understand each and every step and what are the critical elements in there, at least you would understand what are the contributing factors towards your measurement uncertainty. And that is what is important. How the final calculation is done, it's a separate issue, but you need to be able to say, these are my sources and I know which source had contributed more to my measurement uncertainty. You need to understand things like so if I have a combined uncertainty and now they've calculated an expanded uncertainty, what actually happened in there? The overall picture of how it looks like is important that each and every analyst or chemist that works in the lab understand because essentially when you understand your measurement uncertainty, you understand your method performance, you understand method parameters, you understand method capabilities. It is very important that you engage with these numbers and you understand where they're coming from. At a later stage, we'll discuss method validation. But for now, just have a look at your method validation, your measurement uncertainty, and understand what has gone in there, because that will give you a deeper understanding of your method. See you in the next video.